Hi guys, it's Freddy here, back on the desktop with this week's Retro RPG. And this week I'd like to take us back to the Star Wars universe, back to the D6 system, with this. The Star Wars Galaxy Guide 6 Tramp Freighters, revised and expanded for the Star Wars role-playing game 2nd edition, which came out in 1994. Now, when people are making up characters for the very first time in the Star Wars role-playing game, Generally speaking, there's two types of characters everybody wants to choose. They want to be a Jedi, or they want to be a pilot. They want to be Luke Skywalker, or they want to be Han Solo. Well, the Tales of the Jedi book I covered two weeks ago details all the Force powers and allows us to make up Jedi characters of infinite variety. But in the main rulebook, there's only a couple of types of freighters. So if you want to be Han Solo, you're either going to be ripping them off by flying the YT-1300, exactly the same ship as the Millennium Falcon, dude. or you're going to be flying a Gatrock freighter, the turtle one. And that doesn't suit everyone. Well, this book expands that. They give more information on what it requires to be a freighter captain, a wider variety of ships, and possibly the most important part of it, the customization rules. So you can take your stock light freighter from being a YT-1300 to being faster, stronger, and more heavily armed than Millennium Falcon if you want. But let's have a look at the back cover. First thing I noticed on the back cover is by Mark Rainhagen. Well, for anybody who doesn't recognize the name, he went on to be the uh, designer of uh, Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, the World of Darkness series. So we're in very good hands. This is a quality um, writer here, which I think will be emerging because West End Games really did provide a home for a number of uh, role-playing publishers and people involved in Star Wars who want to went on if I'll stop swallowing my tongue, went on to much better things than just writing little books. But when they were there, they did some marvellous work. So, what do we got? You're a free trader, answerable to no one, hauling cargo for a tidy profit in your beloved ship, with your trusted comrades at, at your side, free from all danger, from all entanglements, imperial or otherwise. Sure, it's not all fun and games, there are Imperial Customs officials to outwit, space pirates to battle, loan sharks, corrupt portmasters, mechanical failures, and a thousand other things which make your life interesting. And somehow you keep getting mixed up with that pesky rebellion. Galaxy Guide 6 Tramp Freighters gives you information on Imperial regulations, ship modifications, and the Minos Cluster, an area filled with opportunity for free traders like yourself. You'll find everything you need to survive while making a handsome profit in the Star Wars universe. And that's what it's giving you, really. Let's open up and have a look at the chapters. So, player introduction, uh, drop point delivery, speculative trading, the black market. So, ways of making profit as a freighter captain. Tramp freighters in the rebellion, loan sharks, so how to get money, uh, ship modifications and repairs, which is the most important chapter in this book, which is why most Star Wars Games Masters will carry it. Uh, the Minos Cluster, Planets of the Minos Cluster, the Minos Campaign, People and Ships of the Cluster, and Charts and Tables. So if we look through, again, we're back to the standard early 90s desktop publishing. There's some rough layout. They've got their formatting of a standard, but it's not bright, it's not glossy, it's not fancy, but it does the job. Um, you notice there's not a huge amount of artwork in this book. Here we are at page 13 before we get our first artwork. And they look pretty similar, if I can fold my page. Um, technology levels, supply and demand, the black market. It's just detailing roughly how you set up trading in the Star Wars role-playing game. Um, helping the Games Master out to let you just take your ship, go out and make profit without going out and having to 
fight Grand Moffs, search down Imperial Inquisitors and blow up Death Stars. Tramp Freighters and the Rebellion, well obviously the Rebellion is very mobile, so they're looking for small ships to bring them usually illegal supplies. Your loan charts, so you two can be in debt to Jabba the Hutt. And then we get to the ship modification and repairs, which as I've said is the most vital part of this book. The bit that everybody wants, because nobody just wants an off-the-shelf ship. Everybody wants to have the better hyperdrive, shields, hull, etc. So, at first it cov covers different types of spaceports, the docking fees and how to work them out. You know, if you're resupplying your vessel with food and oxygen, it gives you all the pricing for that. Your maintenance overhaul, or things start to go wrong if you don't maintain your ship every 20 jumps. Repairs, so after you've been in battle, how to get the ship overhauled. And then we've got modifications and replacements. Um, ways you can modify your ship. They take up cargo and weight. So you can improve your sublight drives, adding a bonus in speed with a chance of a mishap. Sublight drives mishaps. Maneuverability upgrades and mishaps. Hyperdrives. Hull. Weaponry. And that's for modifying the ships. So you can take your basic drive and you can make it faster. You can make your guns more punchy. Boost up your hull. And then you've got replacement systems you can just buy in. Well, these don't have a chance of mishaps because these are designed like that. So you too can spend half a million credits on a... What is it? Speed 12 drive for your freighter. Requiring 24 metric tons. Or you can get more standard drives. You can get your times half hyperdrive like the Millennium Falcon for oof, 90,000 credits. Or you can get more ordinary ones. You can upgrade your ships. Weaponry, a list of different ones. Sensors, sensor jammers, decoys, things like fuel converters. So instead of refueling, you can just throw raw matter in and your ship will convert any solid matter into fuel. Secret smuggling compartments, ca cargo jettisoning, passenger conversions, refrigeration, escape pods, environmental, so you can put whales in your cargo deck if you so wish. And then there's a campaign setting, which is fairly interesting, mainly for the adventure ideas it throws in. It gives you a lot of uh, things just reading through that you can throw your at your players. And then we get through to the characters. Oh, not yet. People and ships. So you've got... A customs officer and his uh, customs corvette. A historian, a bounty hunter. Spaceport control droids. A modified uh, customs frigate that somebody's stolen. Then we have, what type is that? The YT-1000 or so? Nope, YT-1210. Modified YT-1300, designs you still see around today, here's where they were introduced. So instead of having the standard cockpit on the side, Millennium Falcon, you can have something a bit different. I'm not quite sure what the bulge on the side is. A viewing blister? Maybe. And lots of other ships, so we can see what modified uh, free trader vessels are. And yet another modified YT 1300, the side gun this time, and a forward cargo hold. And we've got the mishaps tables, more easy to find, and supply and demand and distances to travel around the Minos cluster. And a standard template for a freighter captain. So it's a very handy book 
for the modification. There's a lot of handy stuff in it that you can just reach for. And it's why this book's definitely one of the ones which, as a Star Wars D6 Games Master, you want to carry it with you. Because your players are going to want to swap out the hyperdrive so they can get places faster. They're going to get sick of not being able to take down TIE Fighters in one hit, and they're going to want the punchier guns. I promise you. So, thank you very, very much for watching, as always. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing at all. But most of all, you look after yourself. And I will catch you later. Bye.